Yeah, Greenhouse, episode six. My name is Vic. My name is Goodness. And we're doing some magic here. My name is Omar Goodness. Goodness gracious. Omar Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah. How did Goodness come to be? That was that, that, was that Omar Goodness. Like, it was just kind of stuck. Um, but Goodness because it's that's always been my vibe, you know? Tell us more about the Goodness vibe. The Goodness vibe has always been about, you know, including, being inclusive. And good. And, and good. And, and shedding light on people that might not get the light that they deserve. And that's why Water the Plants exists. Mm-hmm. It's because goodness decided to spread the good to the world. Yeah, I look like a dick, but I'm actually a really nice guy. <laughs> In the morning and find something to watch Watering my plants and checking on my crops Not enough love, not enough love in the world Not enough love, not enough love in the world The Greenhouse with Goodness and Vic <laughs> So we're here episode 6 and it's been... It's been a wild ride so far. We're only we're less than ten episodes in. Right. We're nearing. We're we're above over the. We're on the Wednesday of, of our week. We're over the hump of the the middle, which is that Wednesday, that middle part, that episode five. We're on episode six now. Mm. We have already showcased a ton of amazing artists. Yeah, and if you guys haven't checked it out, you have to check it out. Hit it up our YouTube link in our bio and all our social platforms at H two O the Plants Water the Plants and. We got some more for y'all this week. We got some more to highlight this week and talk about. Mm-hmm. More specifically, we got more to catch up on. How you been? What have things been up to since last week? Man, same old, same old. Just uh, you know, doing the, you know, working a lot. Did you choke slam your kid this week? Um, yeah, we did a little bit of that. Um, um, we did a little bit of that. He he, he likes uh, Sin Cara. He's the Sin Cara character, and I'm. Usually Hulk Hogan or something like that. <laughs> Does he even know who that is? Do you have to show uh, him? I'll, I'll, I'll make a like. I'll bring up like old random like nineteen eighties wrestling dudes like Junkyard Dog, and he'd be like, "Who's that?" And like, it's, it's funny though. <laughs> well, in the last week, Coco Beware. In the last week, we've gone through how? Well, sorry. In the last couple episodes, we've gone through approximately 15 artists or so, more or less. We've showcased a ton of people who have come through and we've been continuously to push this message, continuously pushing this message at Water the Plants, which is we are here to empower creatives, to empower people, to empower everyday people in their dreams. Yeah, you know, people that have a dream that might not be able to have a place to express themselves, well, this is the place for them, you know? Yeah, and have that that space to do that and to grow in that way, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so here we are. I think it's important to mention that because today we're going to do things a little different. Not ma- not majorly different, but enough so that I think people who have caught up for the last couple episodes that we've had might notice that it's a different topic. So with that in mind, with considering the fact that we are specifically focusing on really just thinking about people's dreams and hopes and aspirations and the things that they want to be doing and the things that they hope to be doing in their future and empowering them and providing those platforms, you know, especially with us as people who come from immigrant families, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. As people who come from working class families, from, from people who had to really work to get to where they're at and, and dream, exactly. essentially. And, I, and well, I'm, I'm one of them. You know, we're over here working exactly. our ass off. You know, you know I, I know Vic, you're, uh, you seem like you never sleep. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way, but we're just a little bit, of, you know, a couple of decades apart, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and, and we're coming at it from people from the same area, from Latinos, a Latino perspective, from hustle, hustling, from from coming from from just outside of Los Angeles, I think it's it's really an amazing thing to be able to sit down with you week by week and talk about these things together. Because even though we have so many similarities, we also come from different times, right? We yeah, come yeah. from different backgrounds in that role, in that way. Yeah, we, we you know, um, but yeah, but your mom's from Mexico, my parents are from Mexico, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, that's how it was. You know, we were first generation Latinos in this country, and we're trying to take all the the good things that was taught to us about you know putting in hard work and yeah. family values and and all that stuff, and kind of just 
trying to do it on purpose, you know? Yeah, exactly. With the, with the, with the purpose, you know? Exactly. So today we're talking about sports and sports specifically now. Well, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, you know, Lakers are back. Are they gonna, they're gonna start playing with? I think the we have June thirty or July thirtieth, actually. July thirtieth this month. So. July thirtieth, NBA is coming back. It's the playoffs. Shipping everyone over to Orlando. Everyone's mm-hmm. isolating themselves. And then we got the Dodgers coming back on the twenty third, mm-hmm. right? Opening uh, day against the hated Giants. And then we got football might be coming back in October or September, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so we're looking at and and this these are two from two sports fans, two people who at least speaking for myself, who really kind of put the value in being able to sit down and watch a game, right? And sit down and watch my favorite team win, right? And be able to celebrate that. But it's a weird time to do that now. It's it honestly feels like a weird time to celebrate anything, personally. Yeah, you know, uh, beautiful things about you know, a Dodger game. You know, like having a Dodger dog, I mean, Dodger dog, just having a nice cold beer, at seven o'clock in the Ch- Chavez Ravine air. Just we're not just, even gonna talk about the history of Chavez Ravine. That's a whole j- other episode. Just breeze, just going through my my hair. And Those luscious locks. <laughs> he just whips out. He just steps up when and he's like, walking up to the to the nosebleeds all the way on the top. Actually, that's me, huh? Walking up all the way to the nosebleeds, and you're out of breath. And you're like, <sighs> <laughs> and then your hat flies. You're like, oh, chica, the mother. And you have to like go and run in, and then you drop your beer. There's nothing like that, though. There's nothing <laughs> like that breeze, and then like just just sitting there, you could almost close your eyes and fall asleep for like a minute, and and just be so relaxed, even though there's a. 50,000 people right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes this all different, right? That's what changes all of this now because that is obviously not safe. That's not safe to do now. No, it's not safe it's to not be safe. around that many people, let alone a handful of people nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's crazy that, you know, we don't, we, that's been taken away from us, you know? Yeah. Uh, just because of this COVID, um, well, not just because, because of the COVID. And it's kind of... It's kind of sad in a sense, but it's coming back. It's by coming little, back. Little and it's, it's such a wild concept to think about the fact that that's happening because at the same time, you're seeing rises in cases. You're seeing more happening. You know, uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 is really still continuing to take its toll. So what do you think about that? Do you think it's a good idea to like bring back sports at, at a time where, especially in California, we're at its peak? I, I think it's a it's a hard dynamic because let's be in all in all honesty here. On one side of it, I love sports and I love the idea that I can look forward to something, right? That I can I can think, oh man, that game's happening Saturday night, right? And I get a chance to watch it from the comfort of my home at my own leisure and convenience. Something to look look up to, you know, look look forward to. Yeah, which mm-hmm. we don't have many of right now, right? The things I have to look forward to, um, eating. Uh, walking to my living room, eating, uh, <laughs> coming to the studio once a week, yeah. and working and eating. Well, what, what, the debates, though. What about the debates, the, you know, with your comrades, with your friends, your cousins, your brothers? Comrades. You know I mean, just like, hey, man, like, you know, my team's going to beat your team. You're and just talking with, shit. Just talking general football, shit. like talking shit, you know, barbecuing. Just That's to me, is... That's America. That's America. That's America. That's the America our parents came here for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for, for amongst other things, a lot of like, other things. For hard workers, you know, people that are working on nine to five, normal jobs, uh, you know, union workers, people that work in factories, warehouses, you know, mechanics, just the common folk. They work fifty hours a week. You know, they, that's something that keeps them alive. You know, it's some it's something to come home to and decompress. Yeah, and I think that, I mean you know you got you got a lot of folks, uh, my girlfriend included, who just watches trash reality TV. Oh, my wife's the same. And way. just stuff that I think is just garbage. That I don't know how you can plague your mind with this type of content. But yeah, I, I, like literally since there's been no f- sports, I've had to watch Ninety Day Fiance. Like, oh my god, yo. My, I'm. What are those? The Bachelor. <laughs> it's the worst show on the planet. All those no, shows. Like, uh, argue Real, all the they planet. do is argue. And and people continuously cause drama in order to con- to see well, more man, in entertainment. It's just garbage. It's garbage. They figured out what keeps women watching. I guess you know. I don't know. Maybe I might be sexist by just saying women watch it because I I don't understand. 
I don't understand. I don't get why anyone watches it in general. I was forced to sit there and watch it because I'm trying to be a good partner. I turn into my dad every time that shit's on, like for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, quita esa chingadera, yeah. You start to see all bitter all of a sudden. You're just annoyed. You're like, oh, why am I in such a bad mood? It's like, because the bachelor's on, bro. That's why you're in a bad mood. Yeah, quita chingadera, yeah. Like, what is happening? What the hell are they doing? Why is this even on? Why are they arguing? Like, Always. Oh, oh my God. The last thing you're, you're trying not to argue and then that you're watching Jez- other people argue. That Jezebel. Like, why is he with her? Like, dude, like, you know, I'm all like, and then I'm like, why am I, why do I care? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You just get sucked into it. You're like, he, she did not take him back. He's a fucking dick. Yeah. You did not, she did not take him back. I saw my dad was with Crystal no- novelas. Crystal did not take Brandon back. Like, when with novelas, he's like, oh, my dad would be like, why you watch those novelas? They're fucking annoying, you know what I mean? And he, that's how he was exactly that. Like that. So I can I can thing. respect that escape. I can respect the mm. the something to mindlessly just decompress to. And I think for sports, that's always an amazing thing. Yeah, I yeah. personally, I, I can the athleticism, those historic moments, that point four second Fisher Swisher that is just so legendary to me in my head. Well, the he, hard work too, like the inspirational part of it too, where you see these athletes that might have came from nowhere yep. or. Who have stories like uh, ours. Amazing stories and, and to be able to accomplish so much and being, you know, the best at what they do. Being yeah. at, the, at the peak athleticism, wow. like really just talent it's beyond inspiring. understanding. It's, uh, under, in, it's incomprehensible talent, 100%. Yeah, the, the Kurt Gibson, you know, hobbles to the plate. Off the best pitcher, the unhittable Dennis, Dennis Eckersley. Memorable. And, um, that those moments right there in 1988, like that was maybe what is that 40, 30 years ago? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 three years ago almost. And now it's almost, yeah, 33. You said 80, what? 88. Yeah, 30, 80, 33, 32. And I still remember that to this day. That's how, that's how, and how special that moment is to me. Yeah. To see, you know, Dodgers finally in the World Series when I'm a little kid, you know what I mean? And, your home, your hometown, your city team out there representing. Watching for you. the game with my pops, and 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 then you know, Kirk, we're, 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 it's down to the wire, and Kirk Gibson goes up to bat and hits that home run. You know how crazy we felt. I like mean, this, ah! <laughs> like just going nuts, going nuts. Or or um, you know, when uh, what was it? Was it Mar- was it uh, Marquez? When Marquez was losing the whole yeah. fight, and he hit Pacquiao with that one punch and knocked him out in the last oh. round, and everybody's just like, "Oh my God, no!" And he just ran out the house. That uh, oh was crazy. <laughs> I mean, are, this, those are moments that, like, wow. I mean, they're legendary. They're things that you remember forever. You remember them forever. Some of the best fights, the best matches, the best games, the best competition. People doing what they do best, right? right. Or, or how about? Recently, first heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, for us, I mean, come on. For tortas, Dude, like, I was just looking I'm at sexy that now, and I'm, I'm important. I mean, I was I was even doing that one pose where you, he knocked him out, and he had that one pose like yeah. this, looking down at him. I'm like, I'm Muhammad Ali now too. You I know? arguably have a heavyweight champion in boxing's body. Yeah, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, we out here. I'm cute. Honestly, I at this point we've all just banded together and yeah. have decided that we can also now box. And yeah, we can box, huh? <laughs> which I is not true it. at all. Which is not true at all because that's so much training and effort. But we saw someone who looks like us do it. Yeah. Just but, like we saw people who look like us jump into major league baseball. Yeah. Right. And 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 kill it and and become such a household group of folks in that area. I mean, it's it's that's why it's such an amazing experience. It's such an amazing thing to be a part of and see and. I get the jingoism, and I understand that. I understand the idea of of it being problematic when you're behind something so heavily, and you become just like a a, a, a basically a a devout flaghead about your team, right? Which can turn into problems because then you got the people like beating each other up at stadiums and stuff like that. But at the other other end of that spectrum, it's a hundred percent such an amazing release and just an amazing amazing display of talent. Of ability. ability, it's inspiring. I mean, to me, it's inspiring. I mean, the stories, the the the, the stuff that they do to, to give back to the community as well, and to help encourage other kids. And then it's also a pastime, and I think that's what is that what that's what's what America is about. Is it's supposed to give you a pastime while things are not so great, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, even with the story of Jackie Robinson, Muhammad right. Ali, yes. about these about Tiger Woods, Manny Pacquiao, some of these people who 
100% we're not only underdogs, but we're completely fighting history in their in their And representing a culture, sports. representing a nation as yep. well, uh, their country. Um, and then they, they finally had someone to look up to. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, those, those, those things, I mean, how can we take that away? I mean, I know that we're living in, in a, a very important time right now. And I see, you know, a lot of negativity, a lot of people, you know, going at it. And they're, they're on the fuck it moment. Like, but also so many people are also losing hope. Yeah, losing hope. Like, yo, fuck it. Like, we're going to go cap some fools and they're going to cap us and... And we're there. Why are we there already? Yeah. Why are we already there? You know what I mean? Um, when I think sports, I think, was the chill moment mm-hmm. um, to make sure that people didn't get to that point, you know? But I, I also personally run into an issue because I start to think about that, and then I think, okay, the world's kind of burning down right now. <laughs> the world is a, a, the, just a little bit on fire. And the, world, and the words of um, Wise Intelligence, the, word, the world's on fire, you know? Literally. Yeah. And we're here thinking about bringing sports back when some people can't even pay their rent. Or kids are in cages and like it's crazy stuff, you know? So I, I'm conflicted. Yeah. I am honestly conflicted because there's so many good things. The, the hope, the inspiration that comes from watching your favorite teams play sports, all of those good things that are products of that are super important. But at the same time, who the fuck cares? <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Well, I mean, you know, there's millions of, there's a, what is it, four, 40 million jobs were lost. Um, you know, people are losing their businesses and there's no church. There's, you know, I, be, I think it barely came back last week and, and there was limitations. You know, the mm-hmm. restaurants are shut down to take out, to take out only. I mean, they, they opened for a week and yeah. then shut down and, again for in dine, dining. And, and then we're, but, I guess sports are going to, I mean. And, and at the end right. of the day, these, this is these people's jobs, right? Because so there's going to be no fans. Let's put it there. There's going to be no fans. fans. Yeah, there's, there's going to be, be no fans, fans for so, either of these. So, so. This, is, this is these people's jobs. And, and if they are actively deciding to go out, fly to Florida or to travel in the case of the MLB and do this, that's their call. And, and I get that it's some people's I, well-being. I think people would, the only reason they would be mad at this is because they think they make a lot of money or something like that. And right. so, I, cause I mean, at the end of the day, that's what their career is. So yeah. well, someone did just sign a fat contract. Yeah. Was it $500 million? Yeah. KC's quarterback. Um, what's his name? Um, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. So there's for sure money. That's such a bro name, huh? Patrick Mahomes. That's definitely the frat boy <laughs> who lived down the street from you. That was his name. Patrick Mahomes. He would be outside throwing the ball. Quarterback you know? KC. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult scenario. Am I going to watch the games when they come back? You bet Hell your yeah. ass I will. Fuck you yeah. bet your ass I will. I mean, you my buddies are, ass. we have a, you know, a text thread, of all my fantasy football buddies and stuff. Like, they're just, they're just waiting for the moment yeah. to get back in there and, and start talking shit and talking smack and, and, you know, and getting our teams together and, are you going to do a fantasy league? I, I mean, sh- I got nothing else to fucking do <laughs> besides, you know, work all day. And First of all, the fantasy, the fantasy I mean, football and fantasy leagues for all the leagues are going to be intense this year because and, and, everyone's got time. It's going to be, it's going to like, it's really going to matter this time <laughs> around. Um, every, every move counts. Um, but also, you know, the relationships between, you know, you know, your significant other, you know, um, like, you know, it's an uncommon spoken rule that when the, the game's on you know what i mean don't talk to me don't talk to me and that's <laughs> that's like a it's kind of something that's that you you know us men love to take advantage of it, it's it's <laughs> it's such an uh, og approach because yeah. i think it's interesting right i i i don't have that experience as much in all honesty but then i think about the fact when there's a show and you know the show's on on tuesday mm-hmm. nights for whatever trash tv my girlfriend's watching this week and she's watching her show i'm not interrupting her yeah. during that show no nope. so she dvr'd that shit and she's getting mad because i have shit on the dvr but all her fucking shows are on there <laughs> just unwatched just all watched and just stay safe okay there. i'll delete it i mean i, I want to keep sometimes you want to keep that fight 
you know, and on that DVR just to go back and definitely see it again, right? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> a memorable experience. You exactly, like that's some, that's a time in history. Remember when like, I was happy? There. Leave oh, it yeah. there. Leave it there. Fuck. <laughs> She's like, you got me again. We're at fucking seventy percent. Like, f- just fucking leave it there. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave, like, leave it there, please, <laughs> for my sake. <laughs> We're at seventy percent already, but I mean, you know, I don't have DVR. I'm a millennial, bro. I don't even have cable. At least, at least, we, <laughs> at least we know that we'll be able to come a little back to normal. Yeah, some normal A little bit, a little bit. Something to look, I, c- I can appreciate something to look forward to. I can appreciate something to be excited about. And I can appreciate the normalcy of being, hey, the game's on. Even, yeah. even if maybe this can ban some people together in households, right? You got nothing else in common or whatever reason. You live with roommates or yeah. whatever, and you all decide to go and watch your favorite team play because there's nothing else on. When, when the Lakers were, you know, back in the days when they were on their three-peat, and, or, you know, their second three-peat or two back-to-backs or whatever. Um, just being champs. They are just being champs. They were dominating the, the NBA. Um, <clears throat> I remember I used to, um, which I always watch basketball with my wife, with, with, with then was my girlfriend. She, um, I would make her not watch, but she had to be in the room with me. So she had to like cover her eyes while like it was the fourth quarter, so make sure that, that the Lakers would win. Really? And that was just regular games. That wasn't even playoffs. Because <laughs> I was just, I was like so into it. You're you know? just was, intense. Like, You're a fucking jinx if you watch it. <laughs> You know what I mean? like, You're like, don't wear that <laughs> fucking shirt. You know what happened the last time you wore that shirt. <laughs> you know, that's how it was. It was for real. So that's real. That's a true story. True story. True story. True stories. Um, so, um, I think we we pretty much um, can talk about some of the artists that are coming. We through. got, as always, as every week, we got some amazing artists to feature this week. Um, folks who like ourselves, like the people we are talking about, have really spent time investing in their craft and their art and what they're trying to do and what they're hoping to do. And the goal of having them at Water the Plants was really to allow them to have the resources and space to be the best version of themselves. Yeah, and you know, and some of those artists one day will eventually make hits, right? Uh, 100%. And then when they become hits, hit... Certified bangers. They're going to be a banger. Slaps. Slappers. Yeah. And when, they, when that happens, eventually they're going to have a 45. That's all. You know what I mean? And then when they, the 45 comes, you're going to need a slip mat for that 45 to keep it from scratching. Let's go. And keep your uh, 45 safe. Keep it safe. And this is like the condom for a 45. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Always have it. Keep the thing on you. Chromatics.com. Go check it out. If you need uh, slip mats for 45s, nobody really does this. Everybody just has the regular slip mats. But this is, whack. this is for your 45 turntable. Yeah. Or just, you're just you just want to have this just in case. Um, this is an awesome product. Go check this out. You can show off your friends. You got shot A version there. I the, love her. Well, the, well, they have the shot A version, but this one right here is like the low end theory version of sick. So it's a little tribe called right. Quest there. Tribe called Quest. So very tight. Beautiful stuff. So shout out to Gargamel, Overgold, everybody over there. We got hits only. Forty five hits all day. We're gonna be having hits. a ton of forty fives all over the walls here. And you know, and then I know that when people come to the studio, we we all. To everybody, they have to wear their mask too. Yeah. yeah, they gotta be safe. Everyone here's got their mask on except for us, but that's because we've been really safe. As soon yeah. as these cameras stop rolling, we throw our masks on while we're planning. But it's about having your masks in style. Yes, sir. And you can check out these beautiful masks that are gonna come onto this screen right now. Check it out. Shout out Selvage Dry Goods for providing us with style. Que fashion, mira la bonita. I don't have it, but my eyes still pop out. Look at that. <laughs> and I think that in general, the work that they're doing, it's a small business. She's really making some amazing stuff happen. Is it, it's handcrafted, right? All handcrafted, a bunch of amazing patterns and designs. She's not and buying the, it from like a Korean and then like reselling no, it, right? No, made in America. America. So we're talking by a Mexican. So we're talking really true America there, true LA. Shout out Selvage. They're doing amazing stuff. And they're donating a mask. They're donating a mask to frontline workers, everyone you buy. That's awesome. That's, yeah. a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. So this week we got on Tuesday. This is exciting because this is a little different. This, this week I think we got a good amount of variety, which is amazing. You know, last week it saw a pretty consistent sound across the board, but here we got some variety. So yeah. on Tuesday we got a shot in the dark with Surplus doing Sur- this beat set. That's the homie Surplus. Shout out to Dirty Science and everybody and over the there. Thing's just like... 
and then it just goes in. Oh yeah, he has that little. He does well, a Seinfeld part. Well, you know, you know, in the two thousands, you know, the beat scene blew up. Yeah, it was huge. Huge. Um, You're talking about like Nujabes, all the people who were just really spearheading that whole style and took that from the you know the nineties. With, with the little beat machines. You're just talking about that MP and like, so, what are you doing? I'm pressing. You know, <laughs> rolling. Little rolling beat pads and just getting down. It's like go set up. All right, I got you. Boom. And then they would actually like perform like like without an MC. Like that yeah. was that was something that I never saw thought it would come to life. But I mean, I loved it. You know, yeah. that was something that I was really into. But for it to become popular, it's amazing. Like, it was I would never expected it. Because it. It, awesome. it was the rise of the producer. And I mean, Surplus is out here really combining all these sounds and elements, right? Yeah. And, he, and he does it in his own way, and he has his own style. He's not a biter. He's he's got his own fresh, unique take in it. But and, he rolls with the OGs too. And he rolls with the you know everybody. Like I said, Dirty Science. Everybody over there. If you don't know, do your research. You better know. Do you your better research. learn. Um, and um, you know, he kills it. I'm not. All I gotta say is you really gotta check this out. Just watch it. Just it's, watch it's it. The video takes so many turns. He's just going off, and it's fun. It's a fun thing to watch. On Wednesday, we got a live at Girl Town with Gamma Gamma. They play their original song Never Mind. So this Long Beach hard hard rock like punk kind of even bordering that line of punk really come in and the original is good i mean we're talking good and these guys just mm-hmm. like shred they shred the the lyrics are great the song's good i mean we're talking these guys really have a certified hit from in rock when in a lot of circumstances you're seeing less guitars even be emphasized mm-hmm. in music you know you're talking in most circumstances people have traded for guitars for synths or pianos Classic, or whatever you know but they classically go in yeah. and just kill it and it's amazing. I mean, these these guys really rep in Long Beach heavy and, and strong and proud because it's it's pretty amazing. They're not trendy. They're no. just classic and real. And they're talented. They're yeah. just talented instrumentalists, talented musicians. Yes, 100%. Sir, yes sir. That's on Wednesday, live at Growtown, Gamma Gamma playing Nevermind. On Thursday. We have the the Queen Deanna. The awesome performance. Yep. She sings Miss You and it, uh it's an acapella. Well, actually it's an acoustic acapella. Mm-hmm. Well, Shut kind of, down, shot in the dark. Shot in the dark, and it's a music. Uh, it's a. It's amazing. It's a. Uh, She's got pipes. She can sing it's her so ass tree. off. She's just really cool. Follow her. She she's doing all kinds of stuff. She's on TikTok. She's on IG. She's just killing Let's go it. Plug plug plug. She she's got all the all the styles and more. She's down with the hour band, and that's also family from here. And so, go check that out. I miss you. Miss you. Well, you're it's gonna so love good. it. It's it's very touching, very emotional performance. Yeah. Um, you have to go check that out. Please. So check it out. Tuesday surplus shot in the dark performing a beat set. <laughs> Wednesday we got live at Grow Town Gamma Gamma performing Never Mind, and then Thursday we got Deanna Stewart, Stewart performing Miss, Miss you. you shot in the dark. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time for a special moment. <clears throat> I'll let you start it off. <clears throat> <clears throat> Dick of the week. Kanye West announced that he's running for president. This dick. This fucking (laughs) dick. This guy. Let me tell you, this guy has the audacity. In the middle of. Excuse me. It's audacity. He has the (laughs) audacity to come in the middle of COVID 19. Really? Yeah, they're like, we said audacity, and he's like, excuse me, it's audacity. That's who's the the dick of the week, too. That's who's the dick of the century. The or audacity (laughs) to come in in the middle of COVID 19. After the Black Lives Matters protest, wow. when the world is basically burning down and say, hey, yo, what up, y'all? I'm going to run for president. Yeah. What the fuck? Is, is anything he does not a polis- like political stunt? Or, I don't know if... A Con- publicity it, stunt or whatever. I, I, and, and this is hard because I am a diehard Kanye fan. I am. I fucking love Kanye. Kanye has almost not... Cre- has, has pretty much not created anything that I don't fuck with. I fuck with all of it. I do. I enjoy all of it. I, I like Kanye. Has Kanye done some stupid fucked up shit? Yes. Has he also been kind of right in some of the shit that he said? Yes. But you're really about to come out here and say that you're going to run for president in the middle of all this. Well, I mean, 
out of uh, all the other three or two can- candidates, he probably doesn't I don't have... even know who's running anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, most of them are even irrelevant. <laughs> fuck it all. The world's over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Go to the bun- bunkers, fuck football, fuck baseball, <laughs> basketball, just fucking go somewhere and hey, hide. peace, love. For a year. Stay positive. Because <laughs> that's what we're all about. I wanted the plants is positivity. <laughs> what the, real, the fuck's s- going on, yo? It's, there's so many crazy things happening. I don't even know what's going to happen next. Yo, I do want to... I am curious. Obviously, all, I mean, f- all fuck shit aside about his, his presidential announcement, whether or not it's real, different discussion. Who is going to be the VP? Hmm. Who would be the... Kylie Jenner? Wow, that <laughs> damn, that would be awesome, bro. <laughs> that would cover everything. We actually are going to start getting our news only from TikToks. So that's actually going to become an official U.S. news source. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's owned by by it, another country. It come, it's like it's like Fox, CNN. No, no, actually, the newspaper like the the Times. I don't even know how to read, bro. You think I'm CNN, reading CNN, Fox, Joe Rogan, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Your daily news sources. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to expect from all this. I mean, there's a bunch of conversations going around that it's a publicity stunt. He only promotes stuff when it has to do with the album, which whatever. To to each their own, but, right? But both him and his wife are, are are known for that. I mean, isn't she like going to be like some kind of lawyer or something like that? Yeah, right? she's like, actually went to law school. She well, actually she, went to law she, school. She, or, I don't she know found she some finished. kind of lo- loophole to become a lawyer without actually taking like the bar or something. Oh, like that. I don't know. I know she went to law school. I know she was studying for law school. And then and then um, you know, and there are a lot of people say. I mean, I don't know, man. This is just hearsay from people that, that are in my family that pay attention to that shit. Is that she kind of? Did it to like promote her show, you know, like you know all the things that she's doing, like getting people out of jail and stuff, is to provo- promote a show. Does know? anybody do anything selflessly anymore? No, nah, I mean, sh- I'm gonna run for president. I think we do. We do. We do. So too. We're here. What the fuck are we here? Nobody's even watching, <laughs> and we're here trying to give back to the community, not for us. <laughs> <laughs> he said no one's even watching. <laughs> oh my goodness! This dick of the week, Kanye West. Only potential good thing that might come out of it is that he might bring a third party to the table, That's but a, at what cost? Because the American political system is all in shambles. Because, I mean, whoever, there's no swaying people to not vote for Donald Trump anymore. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, if, if whatever is happening right now doesn't change your perspective or want you to change your vote, if you're going to ride with the Republican, man, God bless you, bro. That's do all. your thing. Do your thizzle and the same thing with the Democrats because, I mean, it's the lesser of both evils <laughs> or vice versa, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on with the world and whatever, you know. Everything that I've learned, what I've learned in this year that every, not only the things that my family has taught me over the years is completely wrong and bullshit, that History is completely It's bullshit. completely wrong and bullshit. <laughs> history, history is told from the victors. It's the... Me. I tell the history. And that's episode six so of let, Water the So let's fucking create a new history, yo. To another hundred years. Let's go. 120 years. Let's go. I'm with it. Let's go. Thank you all for tuning on in to episode six of The Greenhouse. Making history. We here making history, making our own history, so you can make your own history. Goodness and Vic for president, 2024. Let's go, 2024. We would <laughs> declare it now. Who's going to be VP? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll I don't switch. Even know. We'll switch. Yeah, we switch. <laughs> We're switches. Thank you for tuning on in. We'll catch you all next week. Lead with love, positivity, and all realness. And as always, keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing.